Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast Podcast, Episode 1. In today's first episode, we have news updates from Matfer and Debouye about the supply of carbon steel pans and skillets. We're going to take a look at a little skirmish in the big box battle between Costco and Sam's. We've got a quick hit review and more. So let's get started. Now, I talked to the people from Matfer and Debouye. First thing, shout out to them. They're very nice and nice enough to respond to my inquiry. So thumbs up to both of those companies. Nice people. Um, when it comes to carbon steel skillets and pans, as we all know, COVID really disrupted supply chains all around the world, threw everything into chaos. In our little corner of the universe, where I'm really concerned about cookware and supplies of pans and that type thing, there were some supply disruptions a couple of months ago. But I'm happy to say that things are getting somewhat back to normal. So I talked to Matt. They're a French company, but their pans are manufactured in Germany. And Germany didn't have too many problems. They were able to continue to get a good supply of pans in from Europe. They had to redo some schedules in their warehouse, nothing crazier than anybody else had to do. And were able to keep people pretty well supplied. So if you're looking for a mattress pan, like my good old trusty beloved 11 and 7 eighths inch mat for here, you should be in luck. So mattress are in good supply. Now over on the Debouye side, talk to them. Early on, there were some problems with supply of those Mineral B Pro models, such as this one, got a brand new one right here. Those were tough to find in certain sizes. Some of their factories in France were shut down for a while. Everything seems to be back up and running now, and everything is in good supply. So if you've been holding out for one of those Mineral B Pro models and couldn't find it a few months ago, if you shop around now, you should be able to find what you're looking for. Now, some are available on Amazon. Other models and sizes are only available on the Debouye website. So you may have to hunt around, but I think if you look, you'll be able to find what you're looking for now. They also say another wave of supply is coming in October, so things are looking pretty good for the holiday season. Now moving on to Lodge. When COVID first broke out, these standard 12-inch preseason Lodge cast irons, they got crazy out of whack in terms of prices. People were charging between 50 and 60 bucks for one of these things. That's kind of crazy. Now it seems like things have normalized a bit, and you can find these 12-inchers for less than $20 again now, so that's a good thing. Things seem to be going back to normal for Lodge. Now the place I'm still seeing some problems is with Maviel. I have tried to get in touch with them a couple of times, had no luck. Went to their French website, tried to get in touch there, no luck. Went back to their American website a couple of days ago in preparation for this video, and the website is gone. So I don't know what has happened to Maviel, but I really like their cookware. As a matter of fact, cooked in this Maviel copper several times this week. They make good stuff, but the website's gone. I don't know if they're relaunching the website. Maybe they're getting a new distributor in America. Really, I have no idea. They haven't responded to my inquiries. So if you know what's going on with Maviel, let me know, but we hope everything is okay. So that's a pretty good mix there. Some things are getting better, some things are back to normal, and there's still a few problems here and there. And speaking of carbon steel, let's do a little carbon steel quick tip. Got a question from someone named Harrison. He says, hey, Uncle Scott, is it possible to overheat a carbon steel pan such that the seasoning might be damaged? I always wonder this when heating for a high temp steak searing. I think in general, if you're just heating the pan to sear a steak, no, I don't think you're gonna have any problems there unless something gets out of hand. Now, when I sear a steak, I usually use this big, heavy Debouye Mineral B Pro. I'll have that on a gas burner for four, five, six minutes, somewhere around there to get it just screaming hot. That's not gonna damage the seasoning. That's where these carbon steel skillets really shine. Now, if you were to get distracted and accidentally leave that pan dry on a burner for 10, 15 minutes or so at high heat, you might burn a little bit of seasoning off. But I don't think it's gonna be a problem in normal circumstances. And if you did happen to burn a little bit of seasoning off, these pans are almost indestructible. Don't worry about it, just reseason and keep on cooking. Okay, now let's take a look at a skirmish in the big box battle between Costco's and Sam's, both wholesale membership shopping clubs. I have memberships to both, I shop at both, usually on the same day. They're only located about a half a mile from each other here where I live. 
Lots of little decisions get made, but I added it all up. I spend well over $1,000 per month on consumer packaged goods, consumer staples, diapers, groceries, on and on. Lots of little decisions get made. I find it interesting to think about the brands, the stores, and why I purchase one item versus another. The other day I was looking for ketchup. I buy normal, regular Heinz brand ketchup. Number one ketchup in America, the brand leader. The warehouse stores work really well when you can find exactly what you want and buy it in bulk at a good price. That's when they work well. Where I get kind of annoyed is when they have a reasonable substitute, but not the exact thing I'm looking for. So I went to both Sam's and Costco this week on my shopping day. One thing I note, early September, the Christmas decorations are already out. I guess we're skipping Halloween and Thanksgiving and moving right to Christmas. Okay, it's 2020. But I noticed that Sam's had normal, regular Heinz ketchup in a three pack. They also had this Heinz organic ketchup. Not sure about the organic branding for ketchup, but that's a discussion for another day. Got the three pack there. When I was at Costco, I noticed that Costco did not have the Heinz brand ketchup. They had a substitute brand. And I'm kind of hesitant to try a new brand at a warehouse store because you have to buy it in such bulk. You know, I haven't tried it yet. I don't know. I'm not really ready to make that commitment, if you will. So I don't try new products usually at the warehouse stores. But in the skirmish over ketchup, name brand Heinz ketchup, this week Sam's gets the nod over Costco. Now let's do a quick hit review for what I want to call 30 seconds of knowledge. Now these little quick hit reviews, they're going to be for products that don't really lend themselves to big in-depth features. For example, this first one today, we're going to take a look at this Cuisinelle cast iron pot and pan rack. Now, nothing revolutionary here. It's a pot rack. It's made out of metal. But I do want to point out that it's pretty sturdy. So here I've got about 30 pounds, a little over 29 pounds of cast iron and carbon steel on this thing. It still feels sturdy, at least sturdy enough. I've already got three of these things. I just added this one. This is my fourth. It drives my wife crazy when I leave too many pots and pans and skillets out on the stove. So adding these pot racks really helps keep the kitchen a little bit more organized. And it works really well for cast iron skillets that have very short handles or normal sized handles. This 14 inch Maviel, which is actually over 26 inches tip to tail, completely ridiculous. It doesn't work well for things like that, things with really long handles. But with normal size skillets and pots and pans, you can take a junky looking stovetop like this and get it organized so it looks like this. Now, did that make my wife happy? Yeah, for a little while, but now she's on me about something else. So for the Cuisinelle cast iron pot and pan rack, get your kitchen organized for less than 30 bucks. It works well, it's sturdy enough, I give it a thumbs up. Okay, so how was it? That was the first ever PanCast podcast here at Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, keep your stinking comments to yourself. Now make sure you also subscribe if you want to see subsequent episodes. And note that just because you subscribe to Uncle Scott's Kitchen doesn't mean YouTube is actually going to show you the videos. Make sure your notifications are turned on. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast Podcast. <laughs>